Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to a new episode of our program Ask Kuda. As usual, we begin by praising Allah the Almighty alone and sending the best peace and blessings upon His most beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters, I would like to remind you with our phone numbers in the beginning of this uh, episode. Phone numbers, area code 002, then 0238555132. Alternatively, area code 002, then 0100546923. The Facebook page is DR Muhammad Salah uh, Official. Uh, the first question I have is from Jakir Hussein. Uh, Jakir says, the Prophet peace be upon him said, if I were to have taken a close friend among my ummah, I would have chosen Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, but the brotherhood of Islam is sufficient. Can you please explain the Islamic perspective on this? Alhamdulillah, I have some Muslim brothers and as friends, but I'm a little confused whether calling them brothers is more beneficial than friends and whether to have any friends at all. Well, in order to explain this particular text in which the Prophet Sallallahu uh, said, If I were to take uh, an intimate friend from among my ummah, I would have taken Abu Bakr as my Khalil or my intimate friend. Walakin, but, it is rather the brotherhood and the friendship of uh, Islam. Walakin ukhuwatul islami wa mawaddatu is sufficient. There is actually a story behind that in order to understand that the context in which this statement was said. Otherwise, if you take it as is without realizing where, when, and why was it said, it may give you um, a confusing signal. Basically, the hadith is narrated by Abu Sa'id al khudri May Allah be pleased with him. It's a sound hadith in which he said that once the Prophet وسلم, was given a speech and he said, Inna Allah khayra abdan bayna dunya wa bayna ma inda. Indeed, Allah the Almighty has given one of his servants the choice between the whole dunya and what he has with him. So the statement as is, it sounds like a metaphor. What do you mean? What do you understand out of that? So when he said so, فَاخْتَارَ الْمَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ So that servant chose what Allah the Almighty has. At that, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an started crying. I will resume this hadith and the story after these calls, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Fatima from Gambia. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Fatima, mute your TV, please. I, I always message you on Messenger. Yeah. Yeah, inshallah, I will receive you. Sister Fatima, mute your TV, please. Yeah, you always, you always read my message, my, my messages on, on Messenger. But I have, um, 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 in the Illuminati are messaging me on, on, on Sister on Fatima, WhatsApp. can you hear me? Can you please hear me? I Ple please hear me from the handset and mute your TV, please. Hello? Once again, please mute your TV. Yeah, I reduce the TV. Now I, I, I go inside the, the, the bedroom. Um, I always have this message from Illuminati. What was that again? Okay. Well, I understood from Sister Fatima that uh, uh, she, she's been sending messages and she says that she sees that I have read the message. That is not necessarily true. Because basically, before I come to the program, uh, I have somebody who fetches out the questions and he uh, gives me the questions in writing. I, I mean, typed already, he prints them out. So I, I don't have to see them before. I don't have to go through 
tens of thousands of the questions which I get on a regular basis. So if you see that message has been already read, it doesn't necessarily mean that I have read it whatsoever. And also, uh, something relating to that, uh, the past few days, Alhamdulillah, I spent some time answering the questions and I answer them um, through voice message. It gives me like one minute at a time to answer. So I do my best to answer many questions. Um, as a result of that, those who have been answered, they demand answering more questions. And, and, and they think that it's available 24 seven. And this is not the case. Obviously, we have a lot of other commitments. I teach at the university. Uh, I travel here and there. I also have a family. So I, and I answer on different forms and forums. So it is not only on the page. So I do my best and sometimes one question requires me to study back and to ask my superiors and other shiuch, especially if it is a conflicting uh, question or has a difference of opinion. So please, uh, you know, pardon me if I do not answer your question on the page because the questions which I receive on the page, my assistant will print them out and I answer them during the program or we try our best to answer as many uh, uh, possible of the questions during the program. Barakallahu feekum. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that servant who is given the choice between the dunya and what Allah has, so he chose what Allah has got with him. So Abu Bakr Siddiq started crying. People said, why is he crying? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't say bad news. Because as I said, the statement, the question sounds like a metaphor. They don't understand what actually the question means. What is the hidden message in it? So Abu Bakr Siddiq understood the question as follows. That servant who was given the choice was none other than Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And his choice to choose whatever is with Allah, that means Allah has given him the choice whether he likes to hang around for a longer period of time in this life, in the dunya, among his companions, or it's about time to go back to Allah the Almighty, yani to die. So the Prophet has said that servant chose whatever Allah has got with him. Yani he chose to go back to Allah, not to remain in this life. That's why Abu Bakr Siddiq cried. Because of that, the companion said, when the Prophet ﷺ said that we didn't understand it, only Abu Bakr as-Siddiq understood it, and that's why he started crying. So the Prophet ﷺ uh, said to Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, Ya Abu Bakr, stop crying. La tabki, don't you cry? Then he complimented him by saying, Inna min amanni nasi. Indeed, the person who happened to be the most generous, who have done me the greatest favors ever, whether with regards to supporting me financially, morally, or even physically, giving me companionship, supporting me, spending out of his money to support me and my da'wah, is Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an. This is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said. So I wanted to reward him and he said, if I were to take anyone as Khalil, I would have taken Abu Bakr Siddiq as Khalil. But Ukhuwatul Islam wa Mawaddatu. But rather, it is the brotherhood of Islam and that is sufficient. That doesn't apply to all of us. What is the meaning of Khulla? Hmm? What is the meaning of the word Khalil? We know that Allah the Almighty says, وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا You know when we make wudu and we say, تَخْلِيلُ الْأَصَابِعَ Cross your fingers and make sure that you rub in between them. That's called تَخْلِيل. So the fingers will go through each other. Okay? Through. And if the person is wearing a thick beard, you put your fingers through your beard in order to do takhleel al so that the fingers will go through the hair. Why? Because it's kind of thick. So the word 
تخليل or خلال means through that happens when the person's heart is saturated or super saturated with something so it occupies the heart totally واتخذ الله إبراهيم خليلا it means that Ibrahim alayhi salam's heart was fully occupied with the love of Allah the Almighty it has no room for no one else and Allah the Almighty accordingly loved him so much he has treated him like a very close and an intimate friend so this khulla was given to two human beings to Ibrahim alayhi salam and to Muhammad peace be upon him some of the speakers when they say Ibrahim Khalilullah Khalilul Rahman and Muhammad Habibul Rahman assuming that the word Habib is superior to Khalil no when you have a Habib I love my wife but I love my mother I love my father and I may be loving them equally or maybe even loving my mother more than anybody else you know just giving you an example I love all my children but this youngest one you know his love is occupying all my heart and mind so when the Prophet sallallahu said if I were to take any Khalil because he has no room in his heart to be occupied by the love of anyone other than Allah the Almighty but it is okay to take any person as a brother or as a friend the khulla is a very high level it is the highest level when it comes to the relationship that's why it was given to two prophet abraham and prophet muhammad peace be upon him so when prophet muhammad says that uh, abu bakr siddiq have done me a lot of fa good favors that i can never pay him enough he has been too good to me supporting me financially, morally, and spiritually, and every, by every possible mean. I wish I could have taken him as a Khalil, but my heart is already occupied with the love of Allah the Almighty, so I would rather take him as a brother, the brotherhood and the friendship of Islam. But it is okay for any of us to call your friend a brother, or to call your sister a friend, or to call your brother a friend. There is no problem uh, in, in, in giving this name or that name to other one whom you have taken him as a close friend loving him or her for the sake of Allah the Almighty. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sister Rada from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Doing fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, Sister Rada. Uh, okay, brother, I wanted to ask some questions regarding Hajj, yeah. uh, as I am planning to go on Hajj this year, inshallah. Mm -hmm. uh, first question is that I am living in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and over here I have heard that we cannot do Hajj Tamatto, and we only are allowed to do uh, Hajj Afrad. And Hadith which I have uh, read is that Rasulullah did Hajj Kiran, and he advised to do Hajj Tamatto. So is it like that, that we cannot do Hajj Tamatto, and if we do it, we will have to give Fidya? First question. Second question is that can we use blankets inside the tent if there is uh, very proper air conditioning and we feel cold? If we are mahram, we are wearing in ihram. Uh, third question is that can my husband throw a stone in place of me from uh, like for on wife's behalf? Can a husband throw a stone? And uh, one last question is that uh, my husband has foot problem. He is having pain while walking, uh, plantar fasciitis. So can he wear proper uh, shoes like joggers or he has to sh wear shoes which are in which the foot is exposed, the dorsum of the foot is exposed. All right. Thank you, Sister Rada. First of all, I ask Allah the Almighty to make it easy for us to perform an accepted Hajj this year, inshallah. And those who are not destined to perform Hajj this year, in the next years, inshallah hajj is one of the greatest acts of worship it is not simply performing the pillar of uh, hajj and the pilgrimage and that's it it is uh, you know uh, very um, inspiring very spiritual uplifting you know it increases the level of your iman it washes off all your sins and it increases your wealth and all of that so please brothers and sisters if you have a chance you know, stop postponing. Stop saying that life is long. I'm going to do it when I get old. Do it as soon as possible. Sister Wada from the KSA asked four questions, I believe. Uh, first question was about 
that the, she is living in Jeddah and she was told that uh, you cannot do Hajjul Tamattu' and you can only do Hajjul Ifrad. The answer to this claim that it is false. No. If you want to do Hajjul Tamattu', if you want to do Hajjul Qiran, you can do that. Absolutely, you have all the right to do that. The Hajjul Ifrad or singling out the journey with Hajj is for the Meccans. You're not living in Mecca. You're living anywhere outside the sanctuary of Mecca, outside the sanctuary of the Haram. You want to do Hajj Tamattu? No problem. You want to do Hajj al Quran? No problem. You want to do Hajj al Ifrad? No problem as well. So it is with the choice. What is the best of the three rituals on Nusuk? Well, the Prophet وسلم, chose for his companions to perform Hajjul Tamattu. They were initially intending to do Hajjul Qiran. Al Qiran means to join both the Umrah and the Hajj with the same Ihram, same intention. So you do the Umrah and you stay in Ihram until you finish the rituals of Hajj. All in one, two in one. He said, no, 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 no. After you finish your Umrah, if you finish your Tawaf and you finish your Sa'i, simply trim or shave your head. Why? To do Tahallul. So now the Umrah is separate. Then you enjoy taking a break. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> you enjoy taking a break until it is the eighth day of the month of Dhul Hijjah. And there from Mecca, you know, hit your room from the street, from anywhere. You make a new intention saying Labbaika Hajjan. That if you happen to be in Mecca because you came all the way to perform both Umrah and Hajj. Maybe you were in Jeddah, you came to perform Umrah today, yesterday, tomorrow, any day from the first day of the month of Shawwal all the way until the eighth of the month of Dhul Hijjah. That's why it is Shawwal, Dhul Qa'dah, and the first few days of the month of Dhul Hijjah. Al Hajj Ashhurun, plural. Months, معلومات. okay. So in this case, if you've done Umrah any time during the season, beginning from the first day of Shawwal, then you went home and you're coming back to perform Hajj. Automatically, you're doing Hajj al even if you do not intend it. Allah Almighty says, "فَمَن تَمَتَّعَ بِالْعُمْرَةِ إِلَى الْحَجِّ فَمَسْتَيْسَرَ مِنَ الْهَدِي." This is the tamattu. We learned earlier Al-Qur'an to do both with the same intention without taking a break in between. You have the right to do the first, second, or third. If you choose to do Ifrad, that means you haven't done any Umrah in the past few days and you will not do it until uh, it is Hajj. And in this case, you only owe the Hajj without the Hajj. The Hajj is due upon those who are performing Hajj al tamattu or Hajj al-Qur'an and they are not the Mecca resident. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Aisha from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum ya Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, I have three questions, Sheikh. Naam. My first question is about a hadith I had about uh, house fly. For example, if you are drinking something or a food and a house fly fall into it, I heard that there's a hadith that the Prophet said it is recommended that you dip the entire house fly in the food because it has a poison and when you dip it in the in the food poison. And my second question is about to do the Zahaw. If you are praying Salah and you forget to pray uh, you forget to recite a surah after after the Raka'ah the Fatiha, sorry. Do you have to make sujood as sahaw? Because um, sometimes it confuses me that people are saying you have to make sujood as sahaw because you deduct, uh, you reduce something from your prayer to sunnah, the standing of reading the surah and just reading the surah, it's just the correct way to make up for the missing okay. surah. And my third, um, my third question is about lemon. I had another hadith, I don't know whether it's true or not, that it's not recommended for a woman to be taking lemon or lime 
or even use it in on her face and her body. I don't know whether it's true or not. Please, can you help me clarify, Yasha? I can assure you that there is no such hadith. Okay, thank okay. you so much. Jazakallah khairan. <laughs> okay, I'll be waiting just... for the remaining time. Yes, thank inshallah. You. Okay, Sister Agada from the KSA. Her second question is with the blanket issue. She says that what if it gets cold, can I wrap up with a blanket in ihram or the man? Yes, of course. But don't worry about it. Hajj is going to be in August and September. It is going to be really hot. May Allah have mercy on us. Even on the night of Muzdalifa. I mean, we hope that the weather will be cool, you know, and we'll have some breeze. So what about if it is in winter and in Muzdalifa it is extremely cold. You're sleeping in the open air. There are no tents. There are no uh, beds. There are no rooms. Yeah, you want to wrap up in, in a blanket, no problem. You see, what is forbidden for a man is wearing any stitched clothes which were made to be worn. Yani if, if I have an outer garment, abaa, which have sleeves, I'm cold, I just threw it on top of me, I rub myself with it. That's okay, because I'm not wearing it. Okay, so you don't cover your head. Like those who get a sleeping bag and they cover their heads and all of that, you don't cover your head, you don't cover your face while you are in ihram, but wearing a blanket is perfectly uh, okay. Covering up with a blanket is perfectly okay during ihram. Is it permissible for my husband to uh, perform rami uh, in my state? Well, that depends on your capability. Like if you're not able to throw the stones, then it is permissible for your husband or any person whom you appoint or request or asked to throw the stones on your behalf after they throw the stones for themselves to do it for you or for anybody else. But what is the reason? Sometimes the person is healthy and physically fit, then all of a sudden started having fever, body is shivering, and he feels his bones like aching. He can't leave the tent. In this case, you can ask somebody to throw the stones on your behalf. It is not only about disability and being handicapped or paralyzed. No, there are some temporary conditions as well. Uh, a pregnant woman is performing Hajj and she has seen a lot of crowd and she's afraid that she will be squeezed or she will get hurt, that will affect the baby. Based on the observation of the current situation, you decide, your husband will decide. But you take it easy, you sit back and you say, honey, why don't you throw the stones on my behalf? No, that doesn't work. Uh, he goes ahead uh, to throw the stones with men and he says, you know what? I found it easy, so I threw the stones for me and then for you. It doesn't count. It doesn't count. Number one, the person who is supposed to throw the stones has to either appoint or to be informed by somebody else that I'm going to do the stones on your behalf because you have some disability or you're not able to go to throw the stones for uh, health reasons. Uh, wearing the shoes for the foot problem, um, if you have a, a, you know, a flat foot or if you have a medical problem in your feet, you can wear any of those medical shoes. I don't want to give any name brands or otherwise there are many make sure that the heels your heels and your ankles uh, are being uncovered then it is permissible inshallah may Allah make it easy for all of us to comprehend his deen we'll take a short break and we'll be back inshallah to answer some more of your very valuable questions please stay tuned Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Sister Aisha from Nigeria had a couple questions, very interesting uh, questions. The first one is about like house flies. Um, it is not necessarily the house flies, it is basically every fly. She says that there is a hadith or she's asking about the authenticity of a hadith which 
uh, prescribes that in case that if any person was having a drink and a fly happened to fall in his drink so the messenger peace be upon him said uh, you gotta immerse it immerse the whole fly in the drink then take it out and throw it away and uh, the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned the effective cause of this advice uh, by talking about something that we have no clue about back then where he said that since one of its wings has the you know what he called it that the cause of the disease the bacteria or the germs and in the other wing it has the antidote for it or the cure for it that is totally or that used to be totally unseen to us as far as the hadith it's a sound hadith and it is collected by Imam Bukhari may Allah have mercy on him as far as the practice you have to understand the circumstances in which the hadith has been said and what does it entail and what does it mean so allow me after this call inshallah to share that with you assalamu alaikum kiba from gambia assalamu alaikum how are you brother fine thank you sir how are you Wonderful. i'm all right i'm all right sir. good 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 go ahead please um i want to ask you uh, this question yeah I would like to know whether um, it is permissible uh, for a Muslim to walk in a bank. What kind of bank? Uh, in a conventional banking. Okay. And what do you do in a conventional bank? And um, if you do so, are your prayers going to be accepted? What do you do in a conventional bank, Kiba? Lending. Lending. So your job description, you'll be lending money or approving, uh, you know, contracts to lend money, which entails charging interest, right? Yes. This is one of yes, the worst. Sir. This is one of the worst sins ever in Islam. If you read the Quran from cover to cover, you would not find any punishment which is severer than the punishment for dealing with interest that is the only sin in which Allah the Almighty by himself threatened that he shall declare war shall declare war again is the person who deals with interest he says Allah in his messenger peace be upon him declare war against those who, sh who, who continue to deal with riba after they have known that it is forbidden charging or paying interest is absolutely forbidden facilitating that through any firm or financial institute is definitely a major sin to the point that the Prophet said in the sound hadith may Allah curse the person who charges interest, the person who pays interest, the person who witnesses a contract of charging or paying interest, and the person who writes down the contract. So everyone who's involved in this transaction is actually cursed by Allah the Almighty. Uh, you know, this is according to our beautiful deen. In Judaism, it is the same. But lately, they said it is permissible to deal with non-Jews with interest. But among the Jews themselves, it is the same. It is forbidden and it is a major sin. In Islam, it is absolutely forbidden to pay interest, to charge interest, or to facilitate that. So if this is going to be your job, I would advise you not to do it. Add to that, my dear respected brother, that the Allah the Almighty said in the Quran, يَمْحَقُ اللَّهُ الرِّبَى وَيُرْبِ الصَّدَقَاتِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ كَفَّارٍ أَثِيمٍ Al-Muhq is a withdrawal of the blessings. So the person may make money, plenty of money, it's a decent job. Yet 
he will be deprived from any blessings in his wealth, in his family, as a result of introducing what Allah has forbidden to his life. It is definitely forbidden and it is categorized as one of the worst sins. May Allah guide us what is best. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Nadia from the KSA. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, how are you, Sheikh? I'm doing fine, <coughs> alhamdulillah. Uh, Sheikh, uh, this year I have a plan to go to Hajj. So I watched uh, 11 videos of Hajj step-by-step uh, step, uh, which you represented. Great. Uh, I, I, yeah, so I, because I wanted to be very clear for each and every step. And uh, but, but still, I have little bit doubt this I want to confirm. Sure. Uh, in um, I, I know that in Ahram, uh, like always, you mentioned that uh, it's must not to cover uh, face and her hands. But if the men are there, you can cover from any uh, from your head. We can uh, move it down. But uh, like always in Umrah, I do like that. And uh, of course, the Umrah is uh, not that much long, not for four five days. I wanted to confirm about the feet that. Uh, Covering the feet, even this, I mean, uh, I always cover my feet even in Umrah, but uh, now for five days, if for example, I'm alone, alone means I'm in the women, in the, the camp with the women, I can't uh, uncover my feet, uh, I mean, only the head and uh, face is allowed to uncover, uh, feet I cannot uncover, I have, must cover it. Sister um, Nadia, for yes, covering your yes. feet while in Ihram, while in the prayer, while you're outside your home, there is... A little difference of opinion and the more right view and it is the opinion of the vast majority of the fuqaha that it's a must to cover your feet for women in the prayer in ihram and if you are going out yani if you are before people are not your mahram so the feet are uh, are included amongst the aura and uh, they relied on some hadith such as the hadith of ummu salama the mother of the believers, may Allah be pleased with her. She have asked the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him once, whether it's permissible for a woman to pray in a khimar and an outer garment alone without wearing an izar, which is uh, the rab or the used to rab around the waist and down like a gown. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's okay if the outer garment was long enough to cover the feet. So they concluded from that that covering the feet is a requirement for the validity of the prayer, which is the same for ihram. So whether you're wearing socks or if your abaya is long enough, <clears throat> okay, that covers the feet, it will do it. So it is not necessary to wear socks. What is necessary is to cover the feet. So if you're wearing a long abaya, that will do it. What is interesting is that we men, while performing um, Umrah or Hajj, I would love to wear socks, especially cotton socks, a kind of thick socks. Why? Because it will be kind of soft on my feet while running for tawaf and for sa'i. Uh, on the other hand, we find some sisters who are asking for a concession not to wear it. Um, Thank you, Sister Nadia. May Allah accept your Hajj and make it easy for you to perform it properly this year, inshallah. I think it's about time to film a new series about uh, Hajj because the series of Hajj Step by Step uh, was filmed approximately 12 years ago by the grace of Allah. It was the last day that Musa Maguire uh, uh, was working for Huda TV before he left back to the States. So um, now I want to go back to the hadith which is collected by Imam Bukhari that Sister Aisha from Nigeria asked about that what happens whenever a fly drops in your drink, liquid. What do you do? You, you got you know, you to understand that the luxurious life that we're living nowadays wasn't available back then. So maybe if you're traveling in the desert, the only drink is the one which you have in your hand right now. You know, in a leather bag, in a little bottle, in a vessel, and all of a sudden a fly dropped in it. What, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to spill it? And I don't have any other drink? No, the Prophet said, 
just immerse it wholly, entirely, uh, and take it out, then throw it away. Then if you want to drink it, go ahead and drink it. If you don't want to drink it, the Prophet ﷺ never ordered you to drink it. But if you have to drink this drink, please dip it and then throw it away. He said something, the Prophet ﷺ was not a physician. He wasn't a scientist either. But he received a wahi from Allah the Almighty. So far, many things that we had no clue about in the past, even within our lives as a student in the Sharia school or whenever I was studying pharmacology, there are a lot of things, new developments, uh, scientific researches, which abrogated many older ones and so on, new development. So no, now we, we find out that, you know, this is what the Prophet Sallallahu has said is scientifically proven right. Before we found out, we have no clue. Uh, if this is what he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a Muslim, my role is to find out first whether this statement is authentic or not. Because not everything, you know, you just heard one sister is saying that, is there a hadith which says that women are not allowed to uh, use lemon or lime, you know? And another hadith that says that, uh, you know, there are some sects who say that it is not permissible to eat rabbits and the effective cause according to them is very silly, you know, is very laughable. No, you dismiss all of that because this is not a reference. But when I say, uh, I search for the hadith, it is narrated by Abu Hurairah, it is collected by the sound collection of Imam Bukhari or Imam Muslim, fine. You don't have to drink it. If you want to drink it, fine, especially if it is the only available drink, after you do what the Prophet Sallallahu said. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Sister Nadia, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Sorry, Sheikh, my line was cut. I just asked you the other question. No problem. Go ahead. Uh, my other question is, uh, I wanted to know about Hazifrat, the Tawaf al Qudum is must right? But I am asking that if, for example, the buses, uh, because yesterday I called the group and asked him that what time they will take us. Actually, I will leave from Riyadh and I'll join the group in Jeddah. So I asked him, he said from 7 Zil Hajj, but uh, he said, I'm not sure about the rush. If it is too much crowded, maybe we'll take you to Mina. So is it okay to do uh, to go to Mina without uh, Tawaf al Qudum? And we can go from there? Or is it must to go Makkah first? Okay. Uh, okay. May I ask you a question, sister, uh, sister Nadia? Yeah. Uh, why did you choose to do Hajj al Ifrad? Actually, um, I was uh, planning for so many years and uh, very hardly this year I came by any, I was able to do so. I wanted to do Sahaj Quran, but my husband, he already did before and he chose Haji Frat. So I chose, uh, when I chose it, I chose Hadi for me only. After that, we thought that how we will be separate. Then when I wanted to add the Hadi and I asked my husband, you will also do Haj Quran. So I wanted to add the um, Hadi in the group but it was not uh, I mean it was there was no option I, I could only remove it so sister, then I will I remove it and Nadia, yesterday asked the group Sister Nadia please take my advice for the Hadi once you go to Mecca inshallah go to a Rajhi bank or any of the pools in front of the Haram okay or in the clock tower give them I believe it is like 400 450 riyal and request a voucher for the Hadi then it's done you don't have to pay it to your true agent or travel agency or the group organizer. You can do it yourself. Purchase the voucher for the Hajj and consider it done. Once you land to Mecca, and I guess you can still do it ahead of time from Riyadh. But why waste this opportunity? You know, you have a chance to do Hajj and Umrah. Why would you do only Hajj? Meanwhile, if you're coming on the 7th, inshallah, you're arriving on the 7th to uh, Mecca, you have a chance, big chance to do uh, whether Hajj al Tamatu or Hajj al Quran. So please, please do not waste this opportunity. Do the Umrah. You know, when you do Tawaf al Qudum, you're almost done with the Umrah because the Umrah is Tawaf and Sa'i. So once you do Tawaf, like if you don't Tawaf al Qudum, instead of doing Tawaf al Qudum, do Tawaf for the Umrah and you just do the Sa'i. And in this case, by the way, if you arrive on the eighth, for instance, do Hajj al Quran, both in one intention. Do Hajj, do Umrah, Tawaf, and Sa'i. Tawaf, then Sa'i. Then go to Mina. Look at the privilege of doing this. 
Then when you go to Arafah, you throw the stones. When you come back to do, you will just do one tawaf, and you are exempt from doing sa'i again for hajj. Those who are performing hajj al-Qur'an, they get to do tawaf for umrah, tawaf for hajj, which is tawaf al ifadah and they get to do only one sa'i. So if you do the sa'i after the first tawaf, which is tawaf al umrah then you're exempt from doing another sa'i after tawaf al ifadah if you've done barely the tawaf for Umrah when you arrived and you didn't do sa'i, that is perfectly fine. You're still in Ahram though, Quran, joined together. You go to Mina, then you go to Arafah, then Muzdalifah, then you come back, you throw the stones, and in this case you would have to do tawaf and sa'i. Tawaf followed by sa'i. So two tawaf and only one sa'i. That is for those who are doing Hajj al-Quran. When is it recommended to do Hajj al-Quran? If you arrive to Mecca very late, like on the eighth day or barely on the seventh night, so there is no time to shave and trim and change your clothes and simply do the Umrah and the Hajj all together. But do not waste this opportunity. Do not miss performing uh, Umrah. It is already included in the package. No one is going to do it for you. You do it for yourself. And as far as for the Hajj, you can always purchase the voucher from in front of the Haram. Brother Abdul Rauf from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing, Dr. Muhammad Salam? Doing wonderful. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, Brother Abdul Rauf. Uh, Sheikh, my question is I prayed yesterday eclipse prayer in the Masjid of Isha prayer, and I prayed it in the following uh, format. I will quickly explain to you. In the first rakah, after uh, getting up from Rukua, uh, um, Imam started uh, reciting Surah Abdul Fatiha again, then he completed the first rakah. And the same thing he did in the second rakah, after getting up from Rukua, he started reciting the Surah Fatiha and then completed the second rakah, followed by Taksim. I was just wondering if this is the right way of uh, praying Eclipse prayer. That is the right way. The Eclipse prayer is done through offering two rukuas in each unit. Okay, and after rising fine. up from the first rukuah, you say, Sami Allahu liman hamida, Rabbana lak alhamd, then you start al-Fatiha, then you recite another surah. It is recommended in the first recitation to recite a long recitation though. And you do the same in the second unit or the second rak'ah. That is the only prayer which is offered in this format. Jazakallah uh, my second request is I just wanted to have a quick call after the program. Is it possible tonight? Uh, well, uh, normally we pray after the program. We'll see. Why don't you try, inshallah, uh, give a call to the, um, uh, to the control people. We'll see, inshallah, if we can take your call after the program. We'll do our best. Thank you so much. Same to you. Sister Aisha, second question and last before we wrap it up for the day, she says if a person forgets to recite the ayat or the verses or the surah after the citation of the surah, surah al-Fatiha, in the first or the second rak'ah of the fard prayer or the nafila, am I required to pray sujood al Nope, you don't have to. The recitation of any Qur'an after the recitation of surah al-Fatiha in the first and the second rak'ah of Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, and in the entire prayer of Fajr prayer, which is only two rakahs, is mere recommended. So if the person didn't recite it for a reason or another, even if he dropped it because he was in a hurry and he did not recite it deliberately, he is okay. Yes, he misses the word of not reciting the surah, but the prayer is valid, perfect, and he will not be required to offer surudu as sah. My dear brothers and sisters, by that, we've come to the end of today's edition of your program, Ask Huda. By the end, I ask Allah the Almighty to forgive us all our sins and to grant us wisdom, knowledge, and the ability to serve Him in the best way. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Allah is my heart's speech. Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance